Hi, Michelle. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. I as long as as long as you're there, um, I have someone taking my tree out in the front yard. I oh boy. I I am I gonna get in trouble because I didn't go through the proper channels? Oh no, no, you're fine. I'm sorry, okay. that's an HOA question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just as soon as I saw you, I'm like, oh shoot, they're coming. No, this you're way. you're you're fine, Michelle. No okay. problem. <laughs> it, it that river birch that I have in my front yard. Yeah. That I planted. Yeah. It's very dirty and messy. Yeah. So it's going this week. So it's going. It's sad. It grew quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it, I know that was the downside of me fertilizing it on a regular basis. <laughs> I suppose you you treated it very well. So there you go. So, Let's see, it looks like Tom is connecting, so that's good. Jeremy is here, he's on mute, but and Robert's here. Hello, Robert. Hello. Mark is here. Hi, Mark. Hello. Ooh, like the, glasses. Like cool. uh, the glasses are cool, but I like the ceiling as well. Yeah, me too. My new cabin. Looks really nice. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And Brad looks like he's piloting a plane with the headphones on. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just Brad. see like, the old joystick right here. Right, exactly. <laughs> I got a highlighter. Here we go. We'll there you that. go. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I like that picture behind you, too. What's that? What's uh, that is the Freedom Tower. Yeah. Nice Across done. from our, our old apartment view from Jersey City. Ah, uh, yes. I remember you lived there. <laughs> yes. I used to go to Jersey City to visit Colgate Palmolive, and they, yeah, had a, a, that was their first plant. I think they had right in Jersey City. Yeah, is that where they have the clock now? That Colgate clock, clock? exactly. Yep. <laughs> it's the only thing that remained from what where they were there. Yeah, that's the old <laughs> clock from Colgate. Hello, Tom. Good evening, everybody. I see a quorum. We should probably uh, get started. One, two, three. Yes, we have a quorum. Robert, you're with us again. Let me get the agenda open. I have a start a start time right at six o'clock, Tom. Okay, Robert, I assume you want to tell us something. Y yes, when the time comes, yes. Uh, well, the floor is now yours. The time well, is thank you. <laughs> thank you, good evening. My name is Robert Owen. I live at 1311 Middleton Street. Uh, in general, I'm very encouraged by Pleasant View's plans. The course has a lot planned or under consideration, and most of it is good. Uh, my overall impression is quite positive. I have just three suggestions for the 2025 budget. First, I recommend that you consider whether a new diesel rough mower is really needed in 2025 in light of the new electronic uh, electric autonomous mowers like the HESP. Husqvarna Automower 550H and Chiora series now being used on a number of golf courses. With the former only costing a little over 5,000 a piece, could you afford to experiment with a few of these on a stretch of rough or fairway for that matter, close to the maintenance facility, for example, Lake Number 5 or Prairie Number 2 or Number 3 next year? If you could defer the diesel mower purchase for one year and buy a few auto mowers instead, you might be able to gain some confidence with the new autonomous technology and be able to adopt it more generally thereafter. And if you could do that, avoid the need to buy another rough mower in the future. Second, I recommend that you consider replacing the John Deere Gator with one or two Gator TE electric UTVs um, the TE is smaller with about 900 pound load capacity versus a TH diesel gator, which can carry 1600 pounds. 
or you could go another route and, and buy a different, bigger e e EUV, such as the Polaris Pro XD electric ATV UTV, which has a 45 mile range, 1,250 pound box capacity, tows 2,500 pounds. There are electric options to a heavy duty gator. Uh, please consider whether these options would meet the golf course needs. In each case, the electric option would reduce maintenance and dramatically reduce fuel costs. It's very likely that the electric machine would outlast the fossil fuel machine. The autonomous mowers <clears throat> would probably also reduce uh, pleasant fuel labor costs. Third, uh, there's an option to consider for the new picker. The new picker for range balls could be both autonomous and electric. There are several such options likely to be cheaper overall and safer for staff, as well as cleaner in emissions and a labor saver. Um, please consider such an option. One example is the Korechi, K-O-R-E-C-H-I dot golf forward slash P capital P-I-K apostrophe, apostrophe R. Uh, that's a fairly heavy duty model available for that company. There, there are lower, uh, lower duty models also available. There are autonomous ball pickers. Thank you for considering my comments. Robert, thank you for that. Uh, would you please send your recommendations to Jeremy? Already, I don't need them. I already know we already know all of that. So I already, we've already do dove into autonomous uh, rough mowers. We've already dove into autonomous range pickers. Um, I, I already am, Robert, you're telling me everything that we've already looked into. So we will take into consideration, okay? Okay. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. We'll close the public comment section. Could I get someone to uh, move approval of the minutes from our previous meeting? I will move that we, I'm sorry, someone else spoke up. Mark, you did? Well, then no. I go ahead and uh, I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting. All right, need a second. I'll second. This is Mark, I'll second it. Thank you, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 Um, agenda items, golf operations, Jeremy. No major updates, I mean, since the last meeting. Um, does anybody have any questions about the operation? I'm not seeing anybody raising a hand. I don't. Um, I, I don't know, either. <laughs> just a couple maybe key things to maybe that that on top of our minds. Uh, uh, you know, we're doing we're still me meeting budget expectations, both, uh, you know, gross revenue and expenses from what we're aware of. Obviously, I don't have the expense side until uh, Q3. Um, from an operating standpoint, uh, you know, obviously, we're going to start losing some staff here uh, with college starting here shortly and then high school starting up again. Um, from a course maintenance procedure standpoint, uh, you, you know, we, you can see the fairways got dinged a little bit. Um, there was, frankly, just a, a, a smidge of an error or miscalculation on our side of things, but we're rectifying that issue. Um, so hopefully we'll see some improvement in the fairways in the very, very near future. Um, and third, the surrounds of the greens, we're going to start resodding some of those areas in the coming weeks now that the temperatures have kind of um, maybe subsided a little bit in the evening in particular. Uh, unfortunately, June's wet weather just completely... Um, made it difficult for that young grass to get established accordingly and, and succumb to some of the you know, roots, frankly, being underwater too long, so. Questions, comments? Moving on. Resolution. It's the first we've seen this. Yeah, well, no, uh, so, did y'all have an opportunity to read kind of through that a little bit? So that those are, you know, think charter or, um, um, oh, gosh, I'm forgetting the TDS. Geez, sorry. Um, you know, they, they service the golf course, right? And and if you notice it just due to the rock wall that they put in place, they were just hoping to move it a little bit further towards our side of things. From our standpoint, we really don't have a problem 
Sean is aware that the Pleasant View Golf Course may in, may in the future um, expand the driveway or with, widen the driveway. Um, you know, not saying we are. Just, just I just asked the question, and then also fencing, and and e there was no major concerns uh, with either of the two things. Um, it was approved by Public Works the other night. I think that was actually was that last week, maybe. It so it is. Public Works did recommend approval for the golf committee. Now we're looking for recommend approval from you all to finance Common Council, or I guess to Common Council, maybe in this case. Any questions? Hearing none, would someone please move approval? Michelle, Any? I I will move approval. Thank you, Michelle. Second. I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Pleasant View Road and multi-use path. Um, <clears throat> has the new sign been in since we talked? Yeah, it has, right? Yeah. Has what, has what, Jeremy? I'm sorry. The new sign, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't remember. Um, uh, finally got the quotes that needed from fencing literally uh, about two hours ago from the last company. So I hopefully we'll start moving forward with the fencing and the, and the gate um, to, to, to wrap things up. So um, nothing on our end from a Pleasant View road standpoint, from a, uh, a multi-view standpoint, um, did you all receive the video that I sent you all? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, thoughts. There was talk, Jeremy, you had mentioned that in the future, possibly doing um, mowing a path for the for the mountain bikers. Why couldn't you do that now? Is that more of a budgetary issue? Because I would think for the safety of everyone coming and going, including the bikers, they would prefer to be going up a grass path rather than those people coming and going out of the golf course late for a tea time or late for dinner because they stayed too late at the golf course. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so you're, you're talking, Michelle. You're talking about the uh, uh, when I said, "Oh, we could do this later on and not where the bridge." Yeah. Okay. So just to clarify, it would be a gravel path, not a grass path. So, okay. yep. Yeah. And and John from uh, uh, Corp, um, he he had some concerns about. They wanted to think about it a little bit longer um, because they wanted to see, okay, uh, could we make this where people would want to bike on it um, as opposed to maybe wanting to be on the road? Because what he was saying is it's, it's uh, bikers probably will want to be on the road if it's not done correctly. And then there's also erosion control issues that we've got to just tackle. And so those are things that, that John wanted to think about before we just went in and did it. Um, now, could we do it earlier? Maybe, yeah. I mean, is it budget? I mean, obviously, budget is is certainly a concern. Um, but uh, I think the priority for us was just let's get the bridge tackled, and then maybe down the road, if if they were open to it, they being the mountain bike community, uh, Pleasant View Golf Course would just do that in good faith. But that's a good question. I mean, we could we could expedite things if John and the mountain bike community wanted us to do that. Is there enough room right after the curve? It gets pretty narrow. Yeah. Is, is there enough room to put the path in you're talking about now? So no, no. So there would be, you know, call it, and you're talking in, in to keep it in conjunction with what Michelle was talking about. Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. So there would be very limited space right there, Tom. Unfortunately, right. Um, and so the path, what Michelle's referring to, would probably start maybe another 30, 40, 50 feet down. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's what your drawing indicated too. Yeah. Carl, didn't you go out and measure that stuff at one point? Fine. At one point, it was as narrow as 10 feet, edge of our drive to the fence line. Uh, did Was that for me, Tom? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I wasn't sure if I heard Carl in that, but I, I did not measure it myself. I, heard that it wasn't quite 10 feet, but I didn't measure it. Uh, Jeremy, did, did anybody else measure that that you know of? Measure what? The, the, the width of the road? The width uh, of the distance the... from the edge of our road 
to, to the, the quarry like, fence line. Right, to, to the, the fence, fence line? line? Yeah. At the narrowest point. Four feet. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's all. Yeah, okay. wow. It's very tight, very tight. Yeah, I was hoping. To, I was hoping for ten. No, 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 no. Right. It, it's it's super tight. Okay. Well, I looked. I looked at what you sent us, and I don't have any questions about that. Other than this, we are accused sometimes of not wanting anybody to wander up to the clubhouse for a sandwich or, or have a, a regular biker come up and if we do what you were talking about that wouldn't prevent people from walking up right yeah that's accurate yeah that's that's correct and, yeah. and i think the accusations are, are frankly misinformed accusations and i, um, I agree but i want to make sure that we are not hit with them again as all well. yeah but as of right now you know the um that area, the, the bridge is designed for the mountain bike community to access the bike park, right? And and it was not designed to dump a multi-use path onto our driveway. And I think that's that's our concern, right? But we would we would certainly welcome a pedestrian to come up here and and look at the view. We would certainly welcome a cyclist to come up here and 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 look at the view. It's just it's not the safest if the masses start doing it, right? And um, Right now we have one-offs. We have, you know, a, a, a pedestrian here and there. We have a cyclist here and there. But gosh, I mean, if we, if we don't control this, it's just gonna continue getting more and more. And I think that's our concern. Cause I mean, you know, the other day I had uh, two kids that were walking. Um, uh, I think I, maybe I told Carlos, I can't remember, uh, a father and a son taking photos um, right at, they were taking photos. I don't know what they were taking photos of. I think the sunset maybe. And um, they were literally in the middle of the road and I was turning to go to exit. And I almost, I mean, I, I'm not saying I almost hit them because I was paying attention, but they're like standing right there. And I'm going, what are you guys doing? And th those are the things that we're trying to avoid, right? It's, it's the, the people that frankly shouldn't be on that driveway mm -hmm. that are on the driveway. Uh, we want, I want to be clear, we want the mountain bike community to access the uh, the the bike park. That is not our intention. It was never to prevent safe passage. Um, our intention is to keep things safe. Our intention is to keep our golfers um, uh, ha having an enjoyable experience, right? Having walkers walk right by them as they're teeing off on hole five or eight of the par three golf course right. would not be enjoyable for a golfer who paid uh, uh, to be out there. And the other thing is it's not safe. I mean, uh, I, I drive by and I, I, frankly, I even hope that they don't hit my windshield, they being the golfers, right? That's, That's me why driving. I always stop if I see somebody on the tee. Yeah. I know, and, I and so the other day, I was, I was driving and this, this uh, person was walking and I'm going, okay, I got and I, there was a car coming, so I had to wait, which is fine, you know? And then I go around and I'm thinking, oh gosh, there was a, there was a golfer hitting, I'm like, oh, don't hit me, don't hit me. And I'm thinking, hold on, we don't hit that person either. Right. And it's, they're walking right into them. I'm going, my God, I would never want to walk there. It, 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 it's, it's just a recipe for a, a not a good situation. And so those are the things we just. I, I don't feel that it's the right setting until a multi-use path is officially put all the way up to wherever they want it to go. They be the city of Middleton to, I guess, CXC. But until that happens. It's mountain bike only, you know. Well, I think you've got a good solution. So let's let's hope it happens. And John, John from uh, the mountain bike community was very he he thought it was a win. Um, I feel it's a win. Um, you know, it's just running by now Brian in the city of Middleton just to make sure that they're all good with it. Okay, so I I I don't feel we need to take direct action on this because I think it's still under discussion. But if you would prefer to have us officially in support of it, then a motion here would do that. Well, and let me let me actually may, maybe state one more thing that I think this is really critical. Um, you know, the cell tower was a huge concern of ours. And we we had our, our, our second incident with the cell tower where we had people tailgating that were non-golfers. Um, and it was at 9.30 at night when, when our staff was trying to lock up and get out of there. Um, they were on, uh, so I'm not gonna name who it was or, or, or the demographic, but they were on, 
on uh, how do I want to say this? Um, Underage drinking and doping. No, no, I'm talking my staff. Let's just see. Let's just say they oh. did not feel comfortable. Okay, they didn't. They did not feel comfortable telling those people to leave, and um, they didn't belong there. Right, the, the 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 tailgaters. They did not belong in that cell tower. That is not a public access cell tower. It's not. It's not owned by the city of Middleton. It's not Pleasant View Golf Course's land. And what what we need to do is we need to keep unauthorized vehicles out of there, which is why I think it's so critical to to putting a gate, a swing gate there. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really do for Pleasant View Golf Course staff. It's not fair for them to sit in the parking lot for 30 minutes waiting for them to leave. It's just, it's not fair at 10 p.m. at night. I agree. So there's two solutions there. One yeah, and, and that's why I think it's so nice because Tom, you're spot on. It, it's two solutions packaged in one one um one, package. <laughs> one, one video that you right. did, which was yeah. which was very helpful, Jeremy, to, to Good. do that. And, Good. And your narrative through it really helped us to to identify what the issues that have been talked about and how those are being addressed. So I, I thought that was very helpful. Great. No, I appreciate that. And and you know, I want to be clear to anybody that's listening is that uh, it's not that we were trying to prevent any safe passage from anybody from the mountain bike community. That was never our intention. Right. Um, our intention was to problem solve. And we just wish that that our concerns were heard. And unfortunately, they just weren't heard. And it, it's sad, um, but it's just the reality. So, Any other comments on this subject? Okay. Jeremy, do you want us to formally make a motion or just move on? I think we have too much. Oh, I think we have, I think there's too many unknowns right now. I you know okay. the, the the concern about the ADA, I just want to make sure that that's verified and yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Okay, moving on. Golf course clubhouse master plan, maintenance building capital reserve. Yeah. Okay. So so let's go through the uh, the, the the easy stuff first. So um, the, the 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 master plan. Can we just table that? I think I think we all agree. Well, excuse me. Unless somebody has anything to add about the master plan, now that I sent over the plans to you all. No. So I personally have not. And this is on me. I have not had an opportunity to dive into them. Okay, so I have a. I, I'm uh, on Wednesday, Thursday. My plan is to dive into it deeper because I'm. I, I'm going to have an opportunity to do so. But if anybody has anything that they would like to share about the the golf course master plan, I'd be all ears. Um, otherwise, the clubhouse master plan. I don't have an update just yet on that. Other than I met, you know, we had a good meeting with uh, with our consultant. We're kind of come up coming up with game plans, right? Which also then means that the capital reserve study. There's no further update. However, the maintenance building. You saw the plans. Does anybody have any concerns or thoughts in regards to those? None here. Other than they look really good, Jeremy. Um... But what's what's the what's the timing? What 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 happens next? Yep. So we we sent uh, Eric Meinholz, our, our uh, I'm sure you guys all know Eric, but yep. um, he's our lead mechanic and assistant uh, superintendent, one of our assistant superintendents, and he had a phenomenal. He's really spearheaded this opera uh, this uh, this project because um, you know he's obviously got a pretty vested interest in this. Um, he, he had a phenomenal response to to those plans, and there's some things that we uh, we're just getting some clarified answers. And maybe some some refinement, and uh, and hopefully the process is this: is that we get it all dialed in and we're ready to go out to bid. Got it. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot there to mm -hmm. look at and go through. Um, I went through most of it. I got lost in some places, but I'm really glad that, that Eric has dug into it and really, you know, has some comments and some clarifications and some things that will help with the final plan. So yeah. He, he, some really good questions that he asked. So, um, yeah, we're, we're excited to get it going. Um, we just want to do it right. Yeah. Same here. Excited about it, but boy, it's a lot. And we definitely want to do it right. Yeah. 
Anybody have any questions about any of that? Nope. Okay. So the budget, this is the big one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, let's start with the the easy, the, my narrative. Any concerns with my narrative? I thought it was excellent. Thank you. I read it through really carefully and, and I thought it was a, a really, really well done explanation of what and why. So thank you. Yeah. Nice to know. Yeah, it took took a long time. I mean, it's not that didn't just happen. You know, the whole the whole thing doesn't just happen over overnight. You know, it's like it's 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 weeks and weeks and weeks of thinking. Actually, I would argue longer than that. But yeah, yeah. I I uh, second Tom's uh, thoughts on that. So I think it was really well done, Jeremy. Thank you. Um, we want to start with capital or operating. Sure. Which one would you like, Tom? Capital. Capital. You had a you had a separate uh, attachment to that, right, Jeremy? Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Can y'all? That's the one. See the capital. Yep. Okay. So. Um, you know, obviously, 2025, right? There's a, a let's let's talk about the the big one first. This is the, I mean, you know, my priority with with the the range balls and and the gully and and protecting Lake Number Three and Lake Number One a little bit. Um, the the fencing is is definitely, you know, it's it's a big chunk of that number. It's it's arguably the majority of it. Um, you know, one of the quotes I got was close to. 275 and another quote I got was close to like 200 and and that and they're, they're they are kind of different quotes so it's like you know though that's something that we'd have to go out to bid on right but um it is it is something that is is very very important to me just to, to start making this a safer area for for the golfers and and you know reduce the the amount of golf balls that we lose uh, I mean you've all heard my spiel um so that's my budgetary item, which also includes a replacements of mats, which it's it's the life cycle is up, believe it or not. Um, and you, you can see our volume. I know Carl was on the practice range earlier today. I mean, what well, Carl, there was what, three open mats throughout the whole range itself. You know, it's a, just a busy, busy spot. It's a busy place. Yeah, um, for, for, for the time that we were there, Jeremy, yeah, it was maybe three, maybe less. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the picker cart is something that, that we want to purchase. Uh, we have it currently in the lease with uh, Yamaha, but we, we we're not happy with the picker cart just due to the topography of our range and getting up the slopes. Um, it, we, the, it's not powerful enough. Um, it does not service our needs, unfortunately, just due to the high volume that, that of range balls that we have. Ideally we would, uh, flatten the whole range and, and it would be a lot easier. And yes, we could look at autonomous. We have looked at autonomous. Um, it's something that was very, very prominent in the PGA show uh, in January. And we'll continue to look at this stuff, but, but it's just, it's not something that we are prepared to move forward with as of right now um, because of the sheer volume that we are doing and the topography that we have. And um, it does pique my interest. It really, really does. I just, I'm not, we're I, right now, the solutions are not, not quite where we want it to be, where we need it to be actually. Um, so there's, a, you know, picker carts in there, a, um, you know, with a proper cage and uh, uh, a new picker head. Um, yeah, this is kind of like just starting to work on that practice range. This does not include any of the redesign that we've looked at right in the master plan, other than the fencing. But we will we will continue, and for the record, we will continue looking at at autonomous stuff. Um, you know, I I'm very interested in it. It just right now we don't have the ability to bring said golf balls from where they dump it out and put it in our hopper, right? If you want to make this full disclosure, if you want to make this fully autonomous, the 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 picker needs to dump it into a hole that then you got to buy a washer for then an elevator to move the golf balls up into the, the, the range machine. Right. And we do not have that infrastructure for next year. 
So what we would have to do is we'd have to have staff go pick the golf balls where the, where the autonomous vehicle dumps it or wherever, you know, meet the autonomous vehicle, take the balls down to the, uh, um, uh, you know, washer, wash the golf balls and then dump them like we, like we currently do. Um, we have looked at this and it does, I mean, truly it piques our interest. We'd love to do it. Um, well, I think we just keep our eye on it. Yeah. We're just not, just not sold on it just yet. Just yet. But I'll keep, but you know what, this, this is just a budget, you know, maybe some, maybe this year in the PGA show or, or like, uh, we'll, we'll see some more, inch, uh, things, more solutions will come, come to it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm not think, saying I that we're so. going to get a picker cart. And this is why maybe I shouldn't, shouldn't, uh, uh, you know, add picker cart on there. Cause I don't want people, no offense, Bob, but I want you to, to sit there and go, Oh, that means that they're definitely going to get that. that. That's not what that means. It's some budgeting. You know, we're going to look at, we're going to look at solutions. We're going to look at, at everything. And just like the mower, we, our staff is already looking at the solutions. We're already talking within the departments that that ha, that did purchase a, an EV mower. Um, some of the feedback we have received is it cannot be used in the rain. Well, that's a big problem for this golf course. Hmm. Now, the autonomous vehicles that we have looked at that. Um, you know, is that something that we could do in the future? Yes, we are looking at that. Um, unfortunately, we're, we're looking to replace something that is needing to be replaced because it's over 10 years old. Um, but we'll continue looking at this option and we'll present these options when we're ready to make the purchase. Right now, this is a budgetary number. Our mechanic is looking at, our superintendent, Matt Stotts, has done a great job of looking at solutions and, and um, uh, autonomous solutions. Some of the things that pique our interest are the, the, I think I've told you about this, the fairway mowers. We would love to get the fairways cut at night autonomously. Piques our interest, for sure. We're not opposed to it. Well, I think we just keep watching it, Jeremy. Yeah, and then the gator, the gator that, uh, was talked about that that's in 2026. So let's just, can we table that one? I mean, you know, we're, we'll, we'll look at EV options. We'll continue to look at EV options. I mean, we're not opposed. We really are not contrary to popular belief. It just, it needs to be, you know, the right decisions and, and, and it, we, it needs to have the infrastructure, which we're currently working on. You know, we are working on this. Hence the uh, the new maintenance That's building. You know, we do have sure. we do have uh, um, you know we are uh, plugging those main or like putting outlets for the for EV mowers in that new maintenance building. So what's the total for twenty five? Yeah, twenty twenty five total five eighty one. Okay. Okay. So now now let me uh, let me show you. Okay, y'all see uh, the screen here, the, uh, the you know, all these numbers? Yep. Yes. Okay. So let's start cash, you know, like uh, assuming that we do what I'm projecting, right? That's our year-end cash equivalents. Um, and this is based on the capital budget that I'm, I'm submitting, or, you know, at least the, the forecast, right? Um, so we've got, you know, the, the 581 right here. So we would take 281 out of our reserves, which leaves us with that. But then this is the big one is, is if we are, if we are truly looking at, truly looking at an EV cart fleet of a hundred, a hundred carts, this is, this is what it's the cost of it, right? Is that's what we're budgeting for that. And that's going to take a huge hit out of the uh, the cash reserves. And so you can see it depletes us pretty quickly down to this number here. Yeah. And that's below our, our comfort level, right? Remember, our comfort level was 1 million. Right. And then we build back up, right? You can see back in you know, the year of 2030. 
we do build that back up. But nope. Not yet. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that? I'm just saying, no, it's too early. Like that 361 is, we don't want to be there. That, that's, I mean, if something catastrophic happened, we'd be back in the borrowing category and we don't want to be there. <laughs> Well, and, and remember, like these are just a forecast, right? This is just a prediction based on what I've what I've been working on with the, this uh, this clubhouse master plan, right? And but but obviously, building infrastructure it, it has a cost, and I and I would love to have infinite funds, and and just we don't. If 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 you ever want to do it, it's. You, you you know that million and a half you're 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 gonna take the hit at some point <laughs> if if you ever want to do it I mean you know unless you're unless you're paying for it over five or six years or whatever the case may be but then you're gonna have to put off if you want to maintain that million and never go below it you're gonna need to put off a lot of these other things that you've got prioritized there so I I. I mean, obviously, we're a year and a half away, or I guess a year away from your 26 capital budget. And, you know, we're, we're going to need to assess, I think, where, where we're at next year at this time and decide if we want to go forward with it and what the comfort level is. But a million and a half, it, I mean, that's the cost of it, so... Right. And, and, and the reason why it has to be 2026 is, is the new cart fleet goes 2027. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. So, you know, these are all things that I've thought about. Could we afford autonomous mowers to, to next year? Yeah, we could. Is that the priority? And, and, and for, for the, for the record, right. It will not reduce staff hours. What it's going to do, it's going to, push staff hours to do other things to take. And that that's where we see the benefit of autonomous mm -hmm. to do things like edging bunkers and make those small little differences that can take us to the next level. And, and, and I've talked to you all about that. It, like I'm very excited about autonomous mowers, but it's not going to reduce staff hours just so that everybody's aware. At least that's not our intention, and and I think that's that's a good thing, and, and th that's some of the articles that that yes, there's arguments on both sides. I've read articles that say, hey, we re we reduce staff hours. I've also read articles our staff hours have not been reduced because of this, and that's one example. <clears throat> I think it's more likely that staff hours will be redirected. So I'm right. not looking at staff savings. And the reason that you rate these things every year is because choices have to be made. Now, Mark makes a good point. It's going to be a million five or more at some point. And right. And, and, and this is the big one, right? I mean, this is the and if we don't want to do this, that that's that's fine. Then we can push up some of the autonomous fairway mowers, right? Um, I, I want to get on board with the city's plan. It's not that I don't. It just what is what is this golf committee's priority, right? To to get EV in in into play. Is it a single rough mower or is it a hundred golf carts? I don't know. We haven't really Jeremy, had that discussion. Like, I... Jeremy, do we have the infrastructure for the 100 golf carts? Um... No. No, that's Brad. That's that's why this this that 1.5 is in there, right? That that helps build the infrastructure. But but okay. I will say this, but it also tackles two other things. I think this would be really important. It tackles lack of storage space. Right? Because you know what we would do is we would get the uh the um the golf cars out of the basement which would allow us to build a, you know, larger walk-in cooler, larger walk-in freezer, um, 
it would it would allow us to do a lot more things with dry goods storage down there, golf shop merchandise storage. Um, you know, we have lack of office space as well. So that's also tied into that. Um, there's lack of uh, restroom space that's tied into that. And then outing that's also tied into that. OK. So it, it services a lot. It's not just EV. So just full disclosure. But then the one thing that we're not predicting is the cost of what an EV car is each year, right? Because a, a, a fuel powered golf car is going to be a lot less uh, on, on a lease rate than, a, than a, an EV powered car. And is that just your, that's your basic EV golf car, right? No bells and whistles to it. You know, yeah, GPS, yeah, I, that I sort of stuff, right? I don't have an official quote, uh, you know, what it, it, uh, like our, our like for like gas car would be compared to a call it like for like EV car. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely more, it's certainly more, but you know, there's reduction in, in, in fuel costs, but there's increase in, in, uh, uh electricity costs. Right. So the, balance them out. Yeah. But if it gets on par with, you know, what the city of Middleton is wanting, you know, this golf course to be, you know. But these are things that we need to we need to figure out. And I'm not dismissing the single molar. That's it's not what I'm saying, right? It, but I think we have bigger fish to fry here. I think we need to solve this problem first. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But, but like I said, with that, with that diesel mower, I mean, we'll look at, we'll continue to look at options. And, and if we feel like there's something that's, that's better out there, we'll, we'll present it and make an informed decision. Between autonomous mowers and EV carts, Jeremy, where are you leaning? I'm not asking you to commit. Where are you leaning? Gosh, I mean, EV carts, I know, right? Very familiar with EV carts. Um, autonomous mowers, not familiar. We don't have the infrastructure in place right now. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. So it would be a, you know, you'd definitely be the uh, early adopters, right? I mean, it, not a lot of courses in this area have have them. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Just well, so we don't have enough information to help or to even to discuss that yet. So I think talking about it's a little premature at this point. But I think we need you to keep looking at it and give us your best advice when you're ready. Yeah, I mean. You know, our mechanic, Eric, has done a lot of research on it. Um, when next year, you know, we'll go, through, we'll give you the option of what an EV would be, an EV option, and then versus a, uh, a diesel powered and, and weigh pros and cons when we're ready to make the purchase. Okay. But I mean, if we're, if we're wanting an EV zero turn, that's not, that's not going to cover it. That 46. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other comments? Questions, discussion? Let's move, move on. So operating, um, I mean, that's a lot, right? You know, like you, you saw all my uh, my narratives, hopefully. Um, does anybody have any questions about operating? Let me pull it up right quick. I don't. Not hearing any others. Give me one sec, sorry. Uh, where is it, right here? All right, there you are. Does anybody want me to go to any line item? I don't specifically have any questions or concerns, so. Thank you, Mark. I was just gonna ask you for your opinion. Yeah. We were all waiting for that, Mark. You know that. <laughs> I am paying attention. Oh, I am go. awake. That was no. not a test. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any questions either, Jeremy. We, we went over a good deal of the 
revenue side of it last meeting, if, if I recall, and then we were uh, looking more at the expense side this time. And I went through that pretty carefully and it looks, looks good to me. So then, you know, like the one thing just to uh, like point out, right. You see that number it's, it's, we would be in the whole of roughly 108, right. right. No, but that's covered through capital reserve. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I took that number out, you know, we'd be close to that hundred thousand dollars, you know, maybe a little bit more, but moving into capital reserve. Got it. Any other, I mean, I guess that was my thought, but any other questions? Not for me. Hearing none. So I guess what I'm looking for is I'm looking for um, a recommendation of approval to the finance. On, on both the operating budget and your capital. capital. Yeah, correct. As as one, correct. But I, I, I'll make that motion on on both the capital uh, capital and operating budget, and as is as you as you've got it presented. And yes. I will second that, Mark. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that is done. Do we need a capital reserve discussion? No, we we don't. We don't. Um, um, and again, I, I I cannot reiterate enough that we will continue to do our due diligence. Just because this is passed doesn't mean that we will forego looking for um, sustainable options or autonomous options. I, I I think that's. I just want to make that very very clear. Okay. And I'll present that next year. You know when we're ready to make the moves. Okay. And then to, to maybe the other thought, Tom, to your point is, is that once we have better numbers from the clubhouse master plan, then we yeah. can start diving into, okay, so it's going to cost this to get that this done. Now, what's the cost of golf carts looking like in 2027, right? Mm -hmm. We'll have a better, we'll have a better understanding obviously next year because we're going to start those discussions. So we're going to need to, we're going to start needing to know. Uh, the cost of, of a, uh, you know, EV cart versus a, a gas car, power cart. Right. Okay. Uh, common council report. Yeah. So obviously Kim is not on today's meeting. Uh, she, she did send me an email. There's nothing they haven't met. I think uh, there was a lack of a quorum. Um, so there, there's nothing to report. Well, if we hurry up, we're going to set a record here. <laughs> Future agenda items. Obviously, golf operation and financial update. We always need that. If there's any budget pushback, we'll need to talk about that. So it won't be approval. It'll be, I don't know. I don't know uh, what it will be. Well, I, I tell you what, if, if there is any pushback, how about I put it on the agenda? If there's not, just leave it off. Fair enough. Yep, yep. That, that sounds good, Jeremy. I think number four should be on. I agree. Yep. Will there be an update on number three, Jeremy? Will we have some feedback on that? Yep. I think number three should be on. I, you know, like, yeah. I don't know if I need to say Pleasant View Road project anymore. Now it should just maybe kind of subside to the multi use path. Yeah, I concur. I, I, I think that's fine. Okay. So we got the path, we got the updates, okay. I'm furiously taking notes. Budget, capital, okay. I lost my Zoom screen. Hmm. Well, we can see you. Luckily, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, there it is. There you are. 
I thought, don't do, any, don't do anything stupid now that you can't see yourself. <laughs> uh, I think we're at, uh, set up a meeting time for next month if necessary. Actually, a September meeting may or may not be necessary, right? If the budget goes through and operations continue as is, even given, you know, given the agenda set, okay, we're, we're gonna meet. Just thought that through. September 23rd. Yeah, I would vote for the 23rd. I'm going to be away uh, the 16th. So that works, works for, for me. me. Yeah, it works for me as well. So um, I, I I do have a budget, a possible budget presentation that night to finance. On the 23rd? On the, on the 23rd. I Unfortunately, I don't have a mm -hmm. time. Okay. Um, so if you want, I can tentatively schedule it for the 23rd. You, we could go ahead a week. Or or the 16th, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Backwards a week, that's fine too. I'll be on the East Coast, but I might be able to call in for that one. Um, okay. Uh, well, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the 16th or the 30th? I won't have uh, Q3 financials then, you know. On the 16th or the 30th? Oh, the 33rd. <laughs> so, okay, here's a here's a suggestion. Should we skip September and take a look at Monday, the 7th of October? So, I still won't have Q3 financials then. I'll probably get them the week of the week of the 14th. I'm willing to go that long. That would be October 21. I'm okay with that. But but the only concern I guess maybe I have is uh, the budget, right? Well, not no, 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 not the budget. Uh, well, I mean, maybe. Um, um, why don't we do this? Why don't we schedule something for the uh, in September? Either the I mean the 16th seems very quick. But we could do it the, the 16th, and if, if we want to adjust, we can adjust. Thoughts? No. What happened to the 23rd? I've got a possible budget presentation that night, and I don't well, know the time. I, I thought you meant you might need some input from us before that, but you don't. So No. Oh, okay. No. Um, no. All right, let's so, go with the 16th. It sounds like the 16th would be the better date. Okay. And that'll be 630, yeah, correct? 630. That'll be 630. And that is my fault entirely. And we will do this Zoom. I see the council is having discussions about in-person and Zoom meetings again. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't either. I didn't see that. And I saw that in uh, the uh, agenda, council agenda. Hmm. Uh, meaning changing? Uh, no, it, it, it looked to me like they were going to, again, discuss it, which means I suspect that someone has raised an issue about not public enough or something. Oh. That's, that's nothing for us to worry about yet. For the okay. time being, the committee still decides, and uh, that means me, and we're Zooming. Okay. We have a meeting. It is at 6.30 p.m. September 16th. 16th by Zoom. By Zoom. And in one of my... I was going to say, in one of my few powers, I declare us adjourned. Carl, I have an email from you I need to read. I'll go take care of that. 
there's uh, not much there that we didn't already talk about, Tom, but <laughs> I think we're covered. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, all right. everybody. Thank thanks, folks. Good night, everybody. Care. Thank you. Have a great uh, yeah. night. Give me a quick call, will you? Or Who's just that, Tom? One. Me? Tom, what was that? You want to give me a quick call, please? Me? Yeah. Okay, sure. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you guys.